Hi everyone, uh, I'm Seth, here at Scientific Strip. We're here with Anthony Kelly from Buffalo Animal Adventures, a local uh, company here. Do you want to tell us a little about that before sure. we get started? Uh, Buffalo Animal Adventures, we're a local wildlife education company here in Western New York. Uh, we've been here now for seven years uh, doing active wildlife education throughout Erie and Niagara County. And basically what we do is we work with wildlife, specifically exotic animals, that a lot of other people either don't really want to work with, unfortunately, or a lot of the time kind of fall through the cracks as amazing creatures that really people should kind of learn about their importance as far as what they do for their environments on our planet today. So, and we go around to areas like schools, libraries, colleges, and we bring a lot of our wildlife ambassadors and talk about the importance of these animals in nature and conservation. Awesome. So, what is this first guy we got here? Our my first guy sweet. coming out today is my friend yeah. Roja. Roja. And Roja is a Mexican red knee tarantula. Wow. Now these guys are actually found throughout southern Mexico's deserts and dry arid climates okay. in that part of the continent. Now these guys are pretty amazing animals overall. Yeah. Full size, the big South and Central American tarantulas are some of the largest arachnids and invertebrates on land today. So this guy, when they get to be full grown, they can get to be around six to seven inches or a little bit longer in diameter wow. around. And these guys are pretty amazing for a lot of reasons. Big tarantulas are a little different than the rest of their arboreal spider family found throughout the rest of our planet. Big tarantulas actually spend most of their time underground in burrow systems where okay. they actually live. So it makes them kind of different for the way they view their world and the way they live their life in general from our spiders here in Western New York. So these guys are kind of neat for building their web system in that burrow, and uh -huh. they kind of use it like an early warning system. So as another creature walks by, it actually sends a vibration down to the bottom of the web where this guy is located at the end of the burrow, and it lets them know one of two things. If it's a very kind of light and quick vibration, it generally tells this guy to come up out of the burrow system and grab your food because a small animal is naturally walking past the burrow. Makes and sense. if it's a very heavy and very deep vibration, Normally it warns this spider to stay down at the end of the burrow physically because there's a bigger animal that could be a danger or a threat to your life. So they kind of sense and live their life very differently than other spiders overall. Kind of neat. What do these guys eat? They eat other insects? In the wild, yeah, these guys, the mainstay of their diet are other small insects, invertebrates, even other arachnids found in that part of the world. Okay. The biggest other relatives, though, which are actually the bird eaters, which are found throughout South America, yeah. they're large enough to actually take down things like small reptiles, small mammals, and even small birds when they're young. That's how they get their name naturally in the wild. Yeah. So they're pretty much kind of big mid-level predators in that ecosystem in That's general. That's crazy. They can take down a bird. 